I'm Joseph J. McAllister, and this is my alternative process. My obsession with uh, mammoth photography actually began with George R. Lawrence and his mammoth view camera back in 1900. Um, he was commissioned by the Chicago and Alton Railway Station to make what they called the largest photograph possible. And it was basically of the Alton Limited, which was a new luxury passenger train at the time. Uh, so he went to Chicago builder, camera builder J.A. Anderson and he oversaw the building of this massive camera which was at the time the largest camera in the world as well uh, which was 20 foot long and weighed 1400 pounds so it was this massive thing uh, the images that it created were four and a half by eight foot isochromatic dry plate negatives now this is basically a dry plate negative image on a massive, heavy, and dangerous piece of glass um, that they had to lug and put into the back of the camera and actually expose. Now, this image was printed three times, which I, I haven't been able to find any kind of evidence as to what the print type was. It appears to be albumin prints to me um, by its nature, which is like silver nitrate and uh, egg whites, which was a popular print medium at the time. Now, these images were sent to the World's Fair at the time, which was called the Exposition Universal of 1900 in France. And these images were so shocking because at the time, nobody had ever seen an image made over 28, 28 inches was the largest that anyone had ever made of any photographic image. So these images were so big that they weren't sure, uh, the committee wasn't sure if these images were some kind of artwork or some kind of uh, fakery. Um, they had to actually send people on a boat all the way back to America, on a train all the way into Chicago, just to inspect the camera equipment and figure out if this was even a real thing. Um, and then all the way back to France. And so once they did figure out that this was actually a real photographic uh, images, then they gave George R. Lawrence an award for photographic excellence. To me, people like George R. Lawrence um, and the early pioneers of photography really capture my imagination. Um, at the time, they were more than just image makers. They were chemists, and they were inventors, and they were also explorers. And they would go into regions uh, of, that were uncharted and uncivilized at the time. And they would risk things like malaria, or being mauled to death by a bear was a very real thing that happened to people back then. You go out, out into the wilderness and uh, you could be mauled to death by a bear, literally. I mean, you could still good, but it doesn't really happen anymore. Who gets mauled to death by a bear? Um, and then another thing is you know there was they would go into places where there was headhunter populations and they would take pictures of these people it was very dangerous they could have been killed um, or Native American populations that might be warring with the uh, the English or French settlers at the time and they could kill you you know it was very dangerous so even like uncivilized parts of the western United States at the time and to me, these people were, these characters were larger than life. They were amazing and just epic people. Mm -hmm. 
I remember one day I was walking around the G. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles, the Getty Center, and um, I was looking through the Renaissance art, which was, you know, created from 1300 to 1500, um, and they have, of course, they have these massive mural-sized paintings that the artist could make, these massive images, and to see those images in person are just mind-blowing and part of that really is the size itself is just gigantuan it's, it's shocking to see these images so big later that day I was down at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art uh, people call it the LACMA for short and I was looking at the contemporary art down there which is basically uh, digital grand printing uh, done by these uh, massive grand printing companies on uh, digital printers. Um, I thought to myself, wow, you know, uh, even digital can make these massive, beautiful images, you know, that are so big that, you know, the only place that they could rationally be is in, in a monstrous mansion or a castle or a, a museum because of the sheer size of these artworks. And that, to me, just seemed just amazing, and, and um, I, I love to look at large images like that. So, but the thing is, uh, later, you know, I was walking around uh, the historical images section of like uh, alternative process and historical photography, and you know, our our images, especially historically, were teeny, like daguerreotypes were just uh, little teeny 3 by 5 inch photos and um, you know a few 8 by 10s tops. Uh, and I said to myself, well where are our massive mural size prints? Where are they at? You know, well, why don't we have them? And the answer is quite simple, we just, we never had the technology, nobody's ever invented it. And to me, that was a problem. And I started thinking to myself, you know, what would a massive alternative process print look like at 10 foot or even larger? Um, and that's what I wanted to know. And the answer turned out to be quite shocking. Uh, in person, it's absolutely mind-blowing. To see these alternative process photographs at 10 foot. Um, it's like you've stepped into the twilight zone. It's just something that you can't imagine unless you see it in person. And I'll, I'll tell you something that I find really amazing about it is even people that have absolutely zero interest in photography or art or alternative process, when they see these massive 10 foot images People just stop dead in their tracks and their jaws drop to the ground and their eyes get really big and they just stare at these images and they say, what am I looking at? And they get really excited about it and I think that's so amazing because I, you know, I've taken somebody who didn't care anything about alternative process photography and I've somehow completely blown their mind. And that's beautiful. That's the kind of questions I want people to start asking is, what is this? And then I can start telling them, well, this is, you know, there's all these different alternative process types that were going on before even film. And that people can do these to this day and are doing it. And it's basically a new art form. And I think, to me, to be able to grab someone's attention like that and get them excited about something that I love is absolutely amazing. And to me, that's really the point of these giant images. Um, not just the art itself, to see it in person and just be mesmerized by it, but, but to get people's attention and get them to want to know more about alternative process. I think that's fascinating. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you.